Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Syracuse American 550s out of 15,000 for 5,000, a medical emergency, captain is incapacitated, uh, request uh, handling for runway 10 landing. American 550, Syracuse approach, roger, altimeter is 3025. Uh, runway 28 is also available if you'd like. The winds are currently 090 at tree. We'll uh, accept runway 28 for American 550. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Crazy day. Just a crazy day. Pilot, HA in the middle of a flight. Everyone's worst fear. So the co-pilot takes over, has to land in another city. That's number one. Just play the song. I'm not in the mood to talk for me. Then I was going to play this song. And I said, wait a minute, looking for a heart of gold, heart attack, what is this? Now, the day began weird, I got to tell you. <clears throat> it started out weird. I got up at dawn, the sky was black, and I say it's always darkest before the dawn. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. It was pretty dark before the dawn, and I took a picture of the emerging dawn out of the darkness, and I sent out a Twitter message, dark day looming. Now, I don't know exactly where my intuition was coming from or where it was going, but it's a pretty dark day out there. I mean, there was, you know, the sun's out, the clouds are out, the East Coast is in a flood, the West Coast is in a drought. Obama is on the ropes, lying through his teeth in the showdown with Putin. He looks like the puny imp that he is. Do you know what's going on in the Middle East? Would you know what's going on in the Middle East when you have woodpeckers like Jake? Tapperhead in the media, men as unqualified as that, propagandists that wouldn't have even made it in the old Soviet Union are now running the American media. Little men, small men, puny men, evil men. Russia started a bombing campaign a week ago. The liars in the American media, as stooges for this corrupt, incompetent, anti American government of ours, the stooges in the media had the nerve to tell us, A, they were only bombing friendly Syrian forces. Russia was not going to take down ISIS. And Obama gave a big thundering speech about how weak Putin really looked by attacking in uh, Syria. Well, let me tell you what's really going on, because I'm paid to find the answers for you. I am paid to work around the clock to find the answers for you. And what's happened is ISIS is collapsing. The rats, the Islamo-Nazi fascist rats are running like dirty little cowardly rats. The big shots with the guns who rape eight-year-old girls. The big shots who blow up churches, they're running like the rats they are from the Russian bombers and the Russian rockets. And ISIS is on the run. And I told you last week what was happening. I told you, told you there's a war strategy. You don't take out your primary target first. You take out the secondary targets first. That's what Russia was doing, you morons, you. But you, you bought it hook, line, and sinker. Because Jake Woodpecker told you that they were attacking free Syrian army. Who, who's the free Syrian army? The al-Nusra Front? Other cutthroats and rapists and kidnappers and murderers? That's who you're cheering for? Well, let me back up a bit. Maybe this is too much for you on a Monday. There's an awful lot going on in the news, but the biggest story to me is that it looks to me, and we got to hope for it, it looks to me like Russia finally took care of business because this lying, incompetent, anti-American thing in the White House lied to you for all these years, telling you he was conducting a campaign against ISIS. What campaign was he conducting? A campaign of charade, a campaign called Charade and Lies. That's the campaign he was conducting. He never wanted to take out ISIS. In fact, you want to go to the conspiracy side? Make my day. The conspiracists, and some of whom are not stupid, are saying that our government funded ISIS, let weapons fall on their hands, overtly gave them weapons, and was using ISIS as a factotum army to take down Assad, because we didn't have the desire to do it. Because Obama ran as an anti-war president, how would it look if he went to war? Okay? That's the conspiracy side. Something you wouldn't see on Saturday Night Dead. So Russia goes in saying enough is enough. 
We're not going to let these bastards grow. We're not going to let them get bigger. We're not going to let them gorge on human flesh anymore. That's it. We're going in. That's the end of the story. And the antiquated Russian Air Force, which we're told couldn't do a thing. Oh, their Air Force is nowhere near ours. The antiquated Amer Russian Air Force seems to have the vermin on the run. Now, we don't know how it's going to play out. Obama gave a thunderous speech, as I said, I think just this morning, boasting that Russia did this out of weakness, and he's the strong one, and that Putin's the weak one. Well, that's not how most people who see it are calling it. They're saying Obama is the metrosexual weakling, and metrosexualism plays in America, but it doesn't play with terrorists. The only thing that plays with terrorists is machismo. And as a result of Putin's machismo, the vermin are throwing down their weapons and running from the battlefields. But again, don't take my word for it. Wait until it appears on Jake Tapperhead's show or Wolfie Blitzer. And then maybe you'll believe what's going on is going on. And that's the opening to my show today. I had a crazy great weekend. And it started weird today. I got to tell you, a gloomy black dawn. Send pictures to my Twitter list, Dark Day Looming. And the day is really not over yet. So let's go back to the song Heart of Gold by Neil Young. And then we'll do the other stuff that I planned on doing. I got a piece for you from Homeland from last night that was shocking, amazing. Normally, you know, I don't play stuff from television shows, but this is amazing. I'm a man who should live a thousand years. Do you understand that? And I'm cursed by my own body in the sense that I can only live a certain number of years. The world needs a man like me for a thousand years. I come along and one, once in a thousand years a man like me arises. Now if you say I'm in a crazy state, good for you. You say I'm a megalomaniac, good for you. You say I'm narcissistic, good for you. Yeah, well that's what it comes down to. I'm sharper today than I was 40 years ago. My mind is sharper. I see things more clearly. I have a bigger message to put, to, to put out there today. And I'm trying to do it the best way I know how, through art, through anger, through humor, whatever I have to use, I need your attention. We are in such trouble as a nation when a fraud, when an invention, when a literally a, a digital president can get away with what this creep gets away with, including having you believe, hoodwinking you into believing he was actually fighting ISIS when he wasn't, and that it took Russia to move in to show how fast they could take ISIS out. I told you the U.S. Air Force could have done it in three days. I told you that. The most powerful Air Force in the world couldn't have done it? Of course they could have done it. Now, how do I know that I'm right? I know I'm right because Russia's doing it. That's number one. But I didn't need Russia to do it for me to know I'm right. I saw it with my own eyes and added it up. You know, 2 plus 2 equals 4, not 7. According to Obama, 2 plus 2 equals 0. Government 0, that's what it equals. Sorry, I couldn't help but uh, get it in there. Because when I get through with you today, you'll understand why the greatest book of our time, Government Zero, is a must for you to own. But I'm not here to sell you a book. I'm here to sell you on reality. Listen to me. Just listen to me. Even the HBO series Homeland, which is as PC as you can get, you know, for the last couple of years it was about the Islamo-fascists, and that's why it was such a great popular uh, show. And then all of a sudden, Hollywood got frightened that they were being a little too real about the dangers that the 7th century vermin posed to the world, including all the friends that are being brought in here into America and sit here waiting to strike us the infidels and destroy this beautiful country that they're allowed to pollute. Even Homeland last night hit a new home run that Babe Ruth would be proud of. And I don't mean the show itself was so good because I'm a little tired of her, the Claire whatever her name is. I can't remember her name with the hysterical woman thing, but she's really brilliant and tough, but she's on the verge of hysteria. I mean, I got it. I liked that for a while. I'm not talking about her character. There's a little too much with the baby and the girlfriends. It turned into a chick flick after a while. No, I am talking about the Quinn character in HBO. You've got mail. Oh, would you turn that off? I'm talking to myself, and I forgot to turn off the sound of my mail. But listen to me. There's a character in the HBO show, Quinn, who's a thin... 35, 40-year-old guy who looks like your average kind of runner in America. And he's perfect for it because he's a CIA assassin. And he's stealthy and he's good. Well, in this series, later on towards the end, and we'll get to it when I come back, Quinn is called into CIA headquarters in Langley to talk about what he did in Syria. And it's almost like in real time. It was so well done and so well thought out 
that it was like in real time today. So they ask this guy, what were you doing in Syria? And then they say to him, well, what, what was your strategy? What's our strategy over there? And he says to them, we have no strategy, sir. And so filled with the typical PC people you'd expect running the United States CIA and the United States government today. You know, women in admiral's uniforms uh, and that kind of stuff. You know, like a college campus recruiting uh, booklet. You get it. Incompetent, corrupt, politically corrupt to the core, incapable of doing anything right. And he gives a soliloquy that had me sit up in my seat. And I called my uh, staff. I said, this was 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night last night. I said, grab that speech by Quinn, the assassin from the HBO series Homeland, where he talks about exactly what's going on, why we're failing, and why the other side is winning. And I'll play that for you sometime in this next hour on the Savage Nation. And by the way, so many things to say all in one thing. Donald will be on with us tomorrow, Donald Trump. Be sure to catch it because I'm going to ask him some important questions. And then I have other announcements to make right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Mr. Putin had to go into Syria, not out of strength, but out of weakness, because his client, Mr. Assad, was crumbling and... It was insufficient for him simply to send them client? arms and money. Now he's got to put in his own planes and his own pilots. And the him. notion that and he put go, forward a, a plan and that somehow and the international Daniel. community sees that as viable community. because there we go again. Uh, there's a Jesse vacuum Jackson. There. I didn't see after he made that speech in the United Nations, suddenly the 60 nation coalition that we have start lining up behind him. You have Iran nothing. And Assad make up Mr. Putin's coalition at the moment. Wait a minute. The rest Did of the world hit? makes up ours. What coalition? You have a coalition of idiots, a coalition of dunces, a coalition of sissies, a coalition of ninnies, a coalition of people scared of their own shadow. You and Cameron are a coalition? What coalition? What have you done to stop ISIS, you liars, you? Putin's doing what the world wants done. That's why he's doing it. They don't get, we don't care about Assad one way or the other. See, we, we're not on the side of Assad. Don't get us wrong here. But we're against ISIS, the worst scourge since Hitler. And that's why Russia is now the hero of the world. Wow. Unbelievable how people don't see this. I don't know how dumb people can be. I don't, I didn't know America was this stupid. I mean, I know that it, in the 20s, there was a writer who said, never underestimate the intelligence of the American people. Actually, I think he said, never overestimate the intelligence of the American people. Yeah, I think that's what he was saying. But I had no, no idea it would get worse, and it has gotten worse. So here we are, and that's a big story. So let me just jump right to this. So last night on HBO, Homeland, Peter Quinn, the assassin, is brought to the CIA headquarters in Langley, and he's asked if it's working, the strategy in Syria. It's so real that I'm playing it for you now on clip one. You said a program should be renewed. I'm asking, is our strategy working? What strategy? <laughs> tell me what the strategy is, I'll tell you if it's working. <laughs> See, that right there is the problem because they, they have a strategy. They're gathering right now in Raqqa by the tens of thousands, hidden in the civilian population, cleaning their weapons, and they know exactly why they're there. Why is that? They call it the end times. What do you think the beheadings are about? The crucifixions in Bayer Hafer, the revival of slavery. You think they make this shit up? It's all in the book. Their book, the only book they ever read. They read it all the time. They never stop. They're there for one reason and one reason only. To die for the caliphate and usher in a world without infidels. That's their strategy, and it's been that way since the seventh century. So do you really think that a few special forces teams are going to put a dent in that? Amazing writing. Astounding writing. I mean, it's a, it's a character that I could have written into one of my previous novels. And it's certainly the message in Government Zero, but it gets even better. How many months or years have I been telling you?